Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum Kid's independent media production. Today is something that I'm super excited about. I've been thinking about it for a long time. It's been something that's been in the questions a lot on all of our different internet locations, my DMs. It has to do with the snare side head, articulation, and the lugs that are not next to the wires. When I first started doing sessions, more so than just live gigs, I had seen the collections of snare drums that guys had. I see all these pictures from studios and things and think, versatility means lots of drums. I'm gonna have this drum for being super articulate, I'm gonna have this drum for a big tubby sound, have everything kind of ready to go and treat them almost like samples or something like that. And the more that I got into tuning and the more I got into the physics of the snare drum itself as an instrument, the more I learned that there's a lot more versatility in every drum that we have than we think. And after fussing with everything that there is to fuss with, I've discovered that where that lives for me, and I think it probably will for you too after you try this, is in the snare side head, but not just the tension of the whole head. It has to do with tension distribution of the lugs on the bottom head. Something that I've heard people say a lot in interviews and elsewhere, um, especially classic rock guys, is that they get their snare tuned and then they loosen the lugs that are next to the wires. Now. Strictly speaking, that's not dissimilar from what we're talking about today, but as you're gonna see, taking two out of either side like that, um, that are right by the wires, actually has a really different effect than what I'm gonna show you today, which is to basically attend to the rest of them and leave those ones alone. Now where we started today, as you heard in the intro there, is we put a fresh snare side on this drum, got everything kind of to where like my medium tuning is that I like to use on this drum, and played it a little bit, recorded it a little bit, and now what we've done is decided that we're not gonna touch the batter head, and we're also not gonna touch the wire tension. They're on there, they're really on there. We have an indie throw off on here, it's my favorite throw off. It has clicks in the turn, so it's definitely not loosening anything you hear, at all in this video is only the lugs on the snare side changing the behavior of the drum. Now what I'm gonna do is take all of the tensioned rods out of the snare side head except for the four that are right next to the snare wire. So basically the ones that you can see when you're looking at the mechanism or the butt plate. You might be surprised, I was really surprised at just how big of an effect this had on the drum, which is to say, it doesn't even sound like a snare drum anymore. All of the tension is still on the rods by the wires, so the wires are hitting the head in the same place they were before, but because we took the tension out crossways, and all of the rest of them, they're not even touching the head, they're flopping around. If I move the drum, they're just jangling around as if the mechanism is disengaged. So right there, we can see that <laughs> the tension rods right by the wires are important, but they're not really defining the sound of the drum, and a lot happens when you start to loosen things that are away from the wires. In this case, we've loosened them so much that we actually don't have contact anymore. The general rule of thumb for me, as you'll see as we go through this, is that the looser these outer tension rods are, the wider, broader, and looser everything sounds in the drum. And again, just to reiterate, I'm not tightening or loosening the snare mechanism or the wires in any way. So anytime you hear it get tighter or hear it get looser, it's just from adjusting these tension rods. Now we're gonna tension them up basically to the point where we have enough contact that the drum sounds like a snare drum and is usable. Here we go. First reaction to 
another drummer or a layperson listening to this is it sounds like the wires are extremely loose. Again, they're the same as they were at the intro of the video. They have not been touched. So this is messy. It's almost low enough that like hitting the drum in the center, we're not getting much back from the bottom head. So we're gonna add a little bit more attention still below the original sound from the intro, but into a range that is actually like usable in a variety of situations. Now we're into a place where the center hits are broad, fairly wide, we have articulation. I haven't changed the wires at all, but now we're starting to get to a place where the edge is usable, the center is usable, the rim shot sounds huge. The pitch of the drum hasn't really changed. More importantly, the feel hasn't changed really because we haven't changed the batter head. So the surface we're hitting is at the same tension it was in the first place. Now we're returning to the original tension from the intro, which is where I normally tune this drum for like a mid-high live situation or for a situation where I wanna have some articulation but not go all the way into like piccolo country. At this point, this basically, as I said, is kind of where this drum tends to live for me. Small adjustments make a big difference without even messing with the batter head, so if that's in tune and feeling good, you can leave it alone. There's even lug locks on here. We're really being extra sure that it's not moving. Now we're gonna go basically as high as I would want to go with this drum on the snare side head. Now, again, I, I'm just repeating it because it bears repeating that the tension rods adjacent to the wires have not moved. I'm only adjusting the other what is it, six of them basically, three on this side and three on that side. And at this point now, if I were to set the drum on the floor, the bottom hoop is now basically flat, where normally it is a little bit out on the edges to conform to the shape of the bottom of the drum. As you can hear, now there's extreme articulation on the drum. Um, in the grooves, in the rolls, in the singles, in everything. Even moving from the edge to the center, you can hear now that like there's overtones that could be quelled with a tiny, tiny bit of muffling if you needed to, but now we have articulation beautifully from the center to the edge, but the drum's not choked because the overall tension of both of the heads is not actually that high. Now, something that I've noticed with drums, all drums that I've had in the past, is that it's possible to ruin their sound with the snare side tuning, even if the head is in tune, if you hit it around the edge on the snare side and all of the overtones and the pitch is good, you have to think about this topography thing. And if you're hearing maybe, you know, from the control room or from yourself when you're trying to get a certain sound that you want a wider sound or you want a tighter sound and you don't want to start from scratch with the drum, these are the tension rods to be thinking about because again, all we did today in all of these examples was those. This means to me that like, say I'm working with a student and they have like an entry level drum or I work with somebody who has a really nice custom drum that they feel is kind of one dimensional. Nine times out of 10, I can show them the amount of versatility in the drum just by adjusting these lugs. Oftentimes people think articulation means tuning the entire heads higher and higher and higher and higher and that's what gets you choked out, that's what gets you bad snare response. This situation right here basically took us from no snares 
to a drum that if I was imagining it in headphones was much smaller than a six and a half by 14 brass, right? Like a rock drum. The point of this basically is to show you that a lot of the versatility in a drum lives in those tension rods and that it's worth taking your drum, maybe taking them out like we did or maybe just lowering their tension, whatever it is, and moving through stages with them of maybe a half a turn without messing with anything else. And then if you find a feel or a tone that you like, then maybe mess with the wire tension, then maybe mess with the batter. But understand that <laughs> the secret knowledge in those is, I, I just, I can't stress enough how much there is there. Now what we wanna present is back to back of the singles so you can hear this sort of escalation in clarity through the drum where you start to hear the tone appear, tighten up, and we end up with that bright sound at the end. And now a back-to-back -back of rolls, because again, articulation and rolls, I mean, it's important. It's fairly clear to me that this is a versatile drum. It's true that most of the drums that we have here are very versatile. Drums exist that don't do a lot of different things, but this is the sort of thing that we can get into with just small adjustments, maybe even big adjustments, that can show us a whole new character in drums that we already have. Important, important note here also. This is gonna vary wildly from drum to drum. So understand that like this, exactly what happened here today, is probably not exactly what's gonna happen with yours because also the width of the wires, their material, how stiff they are, the heads you're using, they all impact this in a variety of ways. This is also why we don't really subscribe to using devices for tuning that measure tension or measure pitch because I don't always wanna have the same pitch or the same tension on a single head or from drum to drum. If you measured pitch at all of the tension rod locations on the snare side, they're not gonna match through all of those tunings. So saying that they need to be the same or that that head needs to be at a certain pitch to be optimal is to discount this whole rainbow of stuff that we just went through here that has a place in making music. So again, not stepping on possibilities, like that's what we're trying to be about here and that's what we wanna share with you. That about wraps it up. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell below so you can hear about all of our new videos. More stuff coming out now than ever. A lot of really exciting snare spotlights I'm looking forward to in particular. Please jump over to the Patreon as well. If you're not already a member, there's a link below. You can check it out. There's gonna be extra footage from literally everything that we do over there, as well as direct access to us if you have questions, you know, video ideas, if you just wanna have a chat, and many, many tiers from the bottom on up along with the Symbol series, <laughs> which we've been looking forward to for a long time, which is in full swing right now. And uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk about with that. And this is a Patreon-funded episode, so if you're watching this, the patrons paid for it. We love them. Thank you so much for that. And lastly, if this is news to you, tell me about it. If it's not, um, I haven't talked to anybody personally that subscribes to this idea of adjusting just the outer tension rods to change the sound of the drum. So I'm dying to know if this is a thing that you've run into and what it got for you.